iPass Publishing presents Psychology in the Fast Lane Difficult Topics Explained Action Potentials and Axonal Transmission. Now, before going through this video, you might want to view the previous video about the general process of synaptic transmission, because we're going to get a little bit more specific in this one. A potential is simply the voltage difference across two points in space. The action potential of a cell is the one that occurs when the cell is actively transmitting information down the axon from the cell body to the axon terminal. The action potential is thus the voltage difference between the inside and the outside of the cell as it transmits information along the axon. The decision to send that information is made whenever the membrane potential of a resting cell breaches the action potential threshold. Neurons normally rest at about negative 70 millivolts and an action potential is generated whenever excitatory input drives the voltage difference up to about negative 55 millivolts. So let's run through the process chronologically from the start of an action potential all the way through the transmission down the axon to its arrival at the axon terminal. First, excitatory postsynaptic potentials will slowly ramp up the cell's membrane potential. The cell will rest at negative 70, but every excitatory signal at the dendrites drives that value upward. At negative 70, the sodium channels are closed. However, their little switches get thrown in a serious fashion at negative 55. It turns out that the first part of the cell membrane that contains a lot of these sodium channels is the axon hillock, where the axon leaves the cell body. If the potential reaches negative 55 millivolts at the hillock, then the action potential will form. The sodium channels in the hillock open up and they let sodium through. Sodium is highly concentrated outside the cell and there is very little sodium on the inside. As more sodium comes into the cell, more sodium channel switches are thrown. As more sodium channel switches are thrown, more sodium comes into the cell. This positive feedback loop creates an explosive situation. The action potential screams down the length of the axon in a flash. In fact, the entire action potential process lasts less than one millisecond. Now for the potassium channels. These channels are also switched by voltage, but they require a much higher membrane potential to become active. Only after sodium entry has pushed the potential way up into positive territory do these potassium channels switch open. Potassium is highly concentrated on the inside of the cell, so as soon as potassium channels are open, potassium rushes out of the cell. When all of these positive potassiums rush out of the cell, the cell membrane potential then comes back down towards the resting potential. However, so much potassium gets through the open channels that the potential actually runs past the resting potential down to negative 75 or negative 80 millivolts. This brief period is called an after hyperpolarization because it happens just after the action potential. Another interesting point about action potentials is that they're characterized by the all or none principle. Any crossing of the threshold will suffice. Like if a cell is stimulated and the action potential threshold is not crossed, then absolutely no action potential will be generated. The initial sodium channels open up only if the threshold is crossed. And once it's crossed, you get all of an action potential. If it's not, you get none. There's no such thing as a partial action potential. 